Hello my soccer universe. I really hate to record review videos on a day when there's still a game to be played in, in a round. Uh, however, all the videos that I have scheduled for this week or as a must would all be on Tuesday, which is not a good day for me to record many videos because I am in the mornings I'm not in. So that thought doesn't work. So quick scramble and I said, okay, the Premier League table is anyway so uneven already that it doesn't actually really matter whether I include the result of Leeds against Liverpool in this video. And we have quite a few things to talk about. And in, in addition, that Monday night game honestly maybe has a little bit bearing for the relegation battle, but I don't think it has much bearing on the, the league in general. I think the big one is are Arsenal really crumbling under the pressure now? Uh, throwing away two 2-0 two leads in a row. Uh, in both cases, having the game completely in the bag in the first half. And then senior players making stupid mistakes and letting the opponent back in. And at least against Liverpool, you were really, really lucky to actually hang on to the draw. Which at that point, one could argue was a point one uh, while City just keep on rolling now still Arsenal have the game more and Arsenal have a lead over City uh, but now City are very well they have the title very much in their own hands as to Arsenal so we have a title race however Arsenal are trending in the wrong direction and we have the head-to-head -head coming up rather soon and I worry a little bit. What actually might speak in favor of Arsenal is that uh, City are playing in all competitions still. So uh, that's a positive. On the other side, the City squad is much, much, much deeper than the Arsenal squad. And it already seems that some of the players that have been playing a whole lot are a little bit losing it. Uh, so yeah. I do worry for the Arsenal title challenge. I think it's a great story that is unfortunately not gonna come to an end, but I would be so happy if it does. Because I say it again, as brilliant as City are, and yes, Holland has another record, blah, 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 blah. They bore me to tears. They really bore me to tears. Uh, I hate to watch games when the winner, unless it's one of my teams, but even then, <laughs> my teams are not, no, no, but I hate to watch uh, games where the winner is a foregone conclusion and um, City games have been exactly that for a long time now. So yeah, a uh, little bit down on that. We have though to talk about the South Coast teams, uh, especially Brighton who have been well, they're brilliant selves and might actually challenge for a Champions League spot. However, they're very likely finishing in Europe. We have to talk about the guys that I'm wearing, Crystal Palace, who unbelievably have done a complete turnaround uh, under Roy Hodgson. They are now scoring freely and they are going forward and they are shooting and I don't know what was happening. Is it that suddenly the schedule got easier? And they were always that good, or is it really that they play differently under Roy Hodgson? That's a question that I would uh, like to know. Uh, so we talked about those two two, two rivals. Um, another South Coast team, Southampton, is probably now really going down. For, 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 fortunately, as to Leicester, I don't think the new hire uh, will do it. And I think Nottingham are also trending in the wrong direction. It seems they're... they're uh, safe for a, a while but I think now nah, uh, it might be between them and Everton in a way but I think that Everton will just escape the drop and it's the bottom three that look now pretty much set on there and then the last thing I want to talk, talk about is probably one that doesn't get nearly as much attention as, as it should and that's Aston Villa um, the way they destroyed Newcastle Fully deserved, could have been 5-6, they were just better. Uh, this is what you get when you have a very well-coached team. And Una Emery is one of the great coaches. But no one wants to believe it because his spell at Arsenal was so horrific. But I think if you look at it, what came after, I don't think it was that horrific oh, overall. Um, it's just wrong time and you know, you uh, succeed a legend. That was also going a little bit sideways. Okay, I think we've talked a whole lot and I have not even mentioned Chelsea, Chelsea and Frank Lampard are a complete uh, 
train wreck, but we'll get there when we talk, talk about the games. We'll start on the previous weekend when Manchester United completely rolled over. Everton missed tons of chances. McTominay was scoring the open third, 36. And then... Uh, Actually, in the beginning of the second half, it was got a little bit even, but then uh, the fans made him and Rashford plays it onto Martial. However, the big story is that Rashford is injured, um, and so it kind of looks... United are, are missing important players at the moment, but they're at the moment also getting results, which is uh, probably, probably good for their top four ambitions. Uh Newcastle United honestly got a very lucky win at Brentford, who uh, completely steamrolled them in the first half. Then Tony misses even a penalty before he scores one, just before for the half. But after the half, Newcastle got, got back uh, and an own goal and a goal by uh, uh, Andre Isaac get them a win. A win that again solidified their top four ambitions. By quite some. Uh, West Ham winning at Fulham was one of those surprise results. Um, Bournemouth at Leicester would have been, but Leicester are so bad at the moment. And now uh, Dean Smith is taking over and I still feel that Leicester are unfortunately going down. And so their great stint in the Premier League uh, is coming to an end most likely. And let's see what uh, will, 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 will come next. But ever since the owner crashed, Leicester have been trending in the wrong direction. And, you know, with no investment in the squad, doesn't look good for, for, for them. Then the, sh uh, the outrage of the weekend was definitely Spurs 2-1 win over Brighton, uh, which was blind robber, uh, robbery, uh, especially the Mitoma goal. That should have counted in the 17th minute. So uh, Son gave, gave them a little bit. Mitoma would have e e equal. It, did, it, it didn't count. Then Dunk. 1-1. One, one. Then there was a, a goal disallowed by well, uh, Welbeck. And the coaches got in it because, you know, the two, two Italians, Stellini was not too complimentary of the Zerbi, who, 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 who didn't like it. But Stellini got sent off for not controlling his bench. Well, that's a rule we didn't know as well. Brighton played Spurs off the park and still managed to do to, to a hurricane goal because the referee did not work in their favor. And it was for the third time that the... PGMOL had to issue an apology to Brighton, which ah, doesn't see it right. Frank Lampard's uh, stint, second stint at Chelsea started badly with a 1-0 loss to Wolves, fully deserved. Chelsea are just going nowhere. Absolutely no uh, nowhere at this moment. I think even with Frank Lampard, it's not going to go uh, Major things need to happen. I mean, the one thing is that Chelsea have scored only 30 goals. I mean, that's ridiculously bad. I don't, there are not many teams that have scored less this season. Uh, City men, <laughs> uh, City easy 4 1 win at Southampton. Yes, Southampton actually sometimes are in the end in the game, but they're just other teams there that, that, that are better. Holland scoring again too. Uh, I really like his third, third, third goal, kind of a bicycle. Goal. Although I have to say, it does not look as elegant when he does it. But hey, it's a skill, uh, piece, p -p 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 of skill. Um, then he comes off. Alvarez comes on, scores a four-one from a pen penalty. So City just cruising. I already said Crystal Palace. 1-0 down to Leeds United uh, in the 21st. They get just before the half the e equals and then completely run riot on them. Ayu, Eze, Edouard and again Ayu scoring four goals in the second half. Kind of settling. Uh, Chris Chris was on a rather safe path at the, at the moment while Leeds still not quite in the clear. But, and unfortunately I did not see this game because I was in the stadium in Linz. What was potentially the best game of the season? The 2-2 between Liverpool and Arsenal. With uh, Arsenal playing, playing brilliantly, having a fully deserved 2-0 lead um, through Martinelli and Gabriel Jesus. And then it's a bust-up between Trent and Alexander-Arnold and Granit Xhaka that seemingly ignited. I mean, I cannot quite believe it, but uh, seemingly that, that ignited. And just shortly after, Salah pulls one back and then it became a completely different game in the second half. Salah missing a pen penalty that would have equalized the game. And what's with him and pen penalties now? But then uh, there were multiple great saves by Ramsdale. However, Bobby Firmino gets an equalizer. I think based on the first half, 
you would say Arsenal really deserved that uh, that draw at least, but on the second half, the chance that Liverpool had to actually win against Arsenal it was quite impressive overall. Fortunately, I didn't see too much of that game. Uh, then another impressive game that I saw more most of it was how Aston Villa just completely took apart Newcastle. I said it in the opener. Um, the shooter has got early on, or I think already in the first minute, they hit, hit the post. Ramsey uh, gave them the lead in, in, in the 11th, and they just didn't convert their chances for most of, of, of time. Uh, Oli Watkins' goal was scored, or uh, was a call called off, but a few minutes later he makes it 2 0 and then adds another one. Newcastle were never in that game, and that was kind of a shocking result. But I think, as I said, uh, Aston Villa are one of the overlooked teams at this stage. Chelsea 1-2 against Brighton does not even tell close to, to the story. Brighton wiped the floor with Chelsea. And it could have been a fun, fun game if the Zerbi had to play against uh, Graham Potter, which did, did not happen. But Brighton already had many chances. It was Conor Gallagher who gave then Chelsea the lead against the run of play. It was deflected. Uh, Brighton get a deserved equalizer through Welbeck just before for whatever and then missing chance after chance until uh, uh, Enciso in the 69th. The brilliant shot makes it 2-1. It should have been more and I don't know what is happening to Chelsea. A Chelsea team that looks completely anemic, nowhere, nothing. And a Brighton team that actually looks quite, quite brilliant, but a Brighton team that again cannot finish their chances. This seems to be the mojo of Brighton. Fulham get a big 3-1 at Everton. Uh, Crystal Palace another win, but this, 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 this is time not as impressive, but 2-0 against Southampton. We can call Crystal Palace, I think, safe uh, for another season. Spurs another shocker. Another one where uh, they had a 1-0 lead through a uh, son. Vinya and Solanke turn the gate at the game round, and then Yuma gets a late e e equalizer, but they cannot hang on. And overall, Brighton, uh, Br um, you know, Brighton, Bournemouth deserved their win. Uh, Watara in the 95th minute, however, also very, very poor defending uh, there. But uh, Spurs not gonna make top four based on such performances. Uh, Wolves' win over Brentford was also uh, in interesting because A, it was full deserved, and B, Diego Costa scored. That's a fun uh, stuff to say that he is still an issue. But you know, Wolves also under Lopetegi uh, getting it two together, also moving more into the safe zone now. Uh, Huang also uh, scoring the second one. And then City again, within a few minutes, having a safe lead. Of course, Holland scores two. His tally is now well over 30. He's going to break all the rec records in the Premier League era. He's not going to break the overall record though. But what this guy's doing is rather impressive. And I, you know, I enjoy watching the highlights. I don't enjoy watching CD games at the moment. Uh, I, I just feel blah about it. There is nothing really exciting. I want them to see, I want to see them challenged, challenged big. And I don't think a challenge is going to arrive at any stage in any competition. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. And then again, our Arsenal, I really hope that Arsenal will keep up, get a win. And it looked good. Jesus and Oedegaard, they played brilliantly. And then Gabriel gives away a stupid penalty. Ben Rama converts it, gets West Ham kind of back into the game. Then they, uh, um, uh, Michael Antonio gets the ball all on the hand. They get the big chance to kill off of the game, but Bukayo Sako misses badly. And a few minutes later, Jared Bowen makes it 2-2 and Arsenal cannot find a way back into the game. And it's now for the second time where Arsenal looked safe, looked like they had full control of the game. For a second time, they cannot finish the job. And now, if City get the win with a game in hand, Arsenal only one point ahead and we have the head-to-head -head coming. So it is kind of a little bit of a blip for Arsenal at the, at the moment. How long it will last, that's what we have. Uh, that's the big question. Can they get back into it? I Honestly, unfortunately, I have my doubts. And then United get a rather easy 2 0 win at Nottingham Four first with Anthony Dalot scoring the two goals. As I said, Monday evening we have Leeds against Liverpool. So uh, currently, as it stands, standings are Arsenal four points ahead of City. However, 
city have a game in hand and you see the big it's now 60 uh 60 40 towards manchester city united and newcastle looking rather safe in the chase for the top four with brighton uh, an outside chance because they have so many games in hand due to the fa car cup run but you know this is could also be uh a curse in disguise on the bottom we get also a little bit clearer um west ham and bournemouth are probably out of it as are wolves and palace uh everton not Nottingham, Leicester and Southampton. Those are the four that I think are fighting with uh, Leeds potentially getting drawn in there as well. But to me, it seems like the bottom three, even though Leicester look um, chance-wise not so bad, but it seems the bottom three are the bottom three uh, at this moment. And that's also what we see now in the um, uh, expected standings. We see that actually Leicester will be uh, just ahead of Everton um, we gotta see I think this is a rather 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 tight race next round the uh, big game Manchester United Chelsea also will not know because of the FA Cup but I think that there's a bigger one I mean there's the big name game but Brighton against Man Manchester City could be a really really interesting one but also we will not get that Arsenal play early against South Southampton to really get back on 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 the feet and then they will have uh, two games more than city but at least they would have had the points on board other than that uh, i don't think there's a really a the, uh, the standout game i think brentford aston villa uh, could be an interesting one however then we have midweek fix fixtures and i will do a video of that one because we get the big one um between uh city and arsenal we will hold, know a whole lot more whether Arsenal can get back into it. Uh, we also have Spurs against United, probably a last ditch effort for Spurs to get back in a top four race. Uh, and we also have the semifinals of the FA Cup coming on the weekend. We have City, an easy one over Sheffield United, so City will be in the final and with Brighton against Manchester United. That could be a very interesting one. And do we see a City Brighton final? That would be that would be definitely interesting. Any case, that's it from with my thoughts from the Premier League for this past two weekends. As I said, I'm planning to do a video after this midweek fig picture because I think it's really interesting. And, you know, after City Arsenal is probably one of the biggest games of the season. Any case, please let me know in the comment, comments below what you think about uh, these games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!